Hey, what's up, 180 Fit? Welcome to Breaking Bad Habits, part four of six. And we are talking about how to break bad habits, anything from just simple, um, small bad habits to actual full-blown out addictions. And I am bringing some myths out there. That's just something you can just like willpower through or change overnight. Um, there's actually a six-step process um, of this self-change. It's not an event. It's a process. And change happens through a series of stages. And so we have to remember that. And that most successful self people who self-change um, or try to self-change fail at least once before they succeed. And so no matter what, don't feel like if you failed before that you're going to fail always because everyone fails before they succeed most of the time. But willpower will do it alone. And we need to understand um, the cycle of change or you risk substituting one bad habit, honestly, for just another. And so what happens when um, ex-smokers satisfy their craving for something else like overeating. Um, and so success depends on having the right information and knowing how to use it. So really, research has shown there's six clear stages in this process, success, successful self-change. And we've gone through the first three, which is one was denial, two was awareness, three was preparation, and four is action. Five is maintenance, and six is termination. So for most people, the process of breaking a bad habit, um, remember, it takes failure, right? And then coming back around. So keep that in mind. So stage four, change um, has to do with recognizing the value and of opinions and experiencing that the fact that we are fully responsible for what we choose to do. And that's Ernest G. Bayer, I believe that's last name to say his last name. He says it. Um, anyway, attacking the problem in the stage is um, the key. Okay, so we go after it. We're going to attack that problem. But we need to remember that action isn't the first or the last step in change. This is not the only stage where the important change happens. To get this far, remember, we had to, you know, have that change to our awareness, right? We had to become aware. We had to change right our emotions and our self-image as we moved from each of the earlier stages to the next so the goal in this stage is to change the way you think you do this by learning um how to relax when temptations are strong so this is where uh, um i'm gonna tell you that strong exercise you all so starting an exercise program can be key here as well as learning effective countering techniques um, like your thoughts and your actions to keep you from uh, falling into your old patterns and how to daily defeat those temptations. Um, countering, something called countering is one of the most effective te techniques in the cycle of self-change. You know, um, it's in easier to promote the new behavior, right, than to get rid of an old one. So it's easier to like, replace. We're just replacing it. So, but with a, not replacing bad for bad, right? Replacing a good for a bad. So trying too hard to break a bad habit is usually a recipe for failure. So know that this is not willpower. It's not like, I'm going to do this. I got this. It's, you know, it's, it's planned out. It's methodical. It's tested. You know, you try it. And if something doesn't work, you go back and you try something different. So as long as you're focused on trying to break the old habit, you know, you're like, you know, or like a soldier who's fighting with one hand behind his back because you're so like, right, all you're thinking about is like breaking the habit. But focusing on your new behavior, right, is like freeing your hand, your tied hand behind from behind the back. Something you have more power to bring change you desire. People who break bad habits frequently experience frustration in the early stages when they're trying as hard as they can to eliminate the old behavior. I know I did this all the time. I was so focused on eliminating my bad behaviors, I mean, addictions and different things that I was so focused on it, like I was handicapping myself. Um, in a very real sense, success comes when you stop trying. By focusing on your new lifestyle, what would you want that's new? You stop trying to break, um, you know, the old habit, almost without even being aware of what ha what's happening. You move to the next stage, as a new behavior replaces the old one. Um, for me, like when I started changing my playground, my playmates, like who I was with, 
Like I started being consumed with going to some other places where there are people who I wanted to be around. And suddenly I forgot about that one. Like it was so easy. Um, you know, when your preparation is good, you should be able to move through this action stage actually very quickly. If you have laid the proper foundation, that is, your stage from transition your transition from stage four to stage five will pre- be a pretty smooth one. Um, you don't need a hand a strategy to handle the um sorry, you do need a strategy. Well, you do need a strategy to handle the daily temptations that arise. So one of the secrets to success is to stay active. And this is, let me get into some theory here. So our bodies were designed for activity. If you think of ancient hunters lived on a diet of red meats that were high in, high in bad in cholesterol, right? And triglycerides, the two most important factors in high blood pressure and heart disease. So, you know, yet anthropologists have discovered that the members of ancient hunting did, tribes did not suffer from those diseases because they led such an active lifestyle. You know, the urges we feel um, when we light a cigarette, pour ourselves a drink, right? Go for that extra piece of cake or drive to the mall are often the physical promptings of an entirely different nature. We think our body is telling us to kick back and relax with a box of donuts. When in reality, our body is actually telling us to move. It's begging us to move. Um, you know, hopefully by now you're convinced of the crucial role of exercise in your total lifestyle change. Um, but of course, you can't exercise or go for a walk every time you're tempted, right? Um, so what do you do? What are your other options? And the honestly, the answer is, and I love this, it's in, called something called RSD, okay? So it's relax, relaxation, stretching, and deep breathing. So relaxation. Smokers who say that they smoke in order to relax are actually fooling themselves. Um, research shows conclusively that nicotine and other chemicals in tobacco stimulate the brain cells and smoking, smoking actually provides the opposite of relaxation. Nicotine is a stimulant. So when you feel um, the urge to go back to your old habit, do something that's truly relaxing. So think about it. A beautiful day at the beach. Imagine you're floating in the water with sun on your face. You know, think about you can actually do that in just a few seconds. If you follow Tony Robbins at all, he talks about changing your state all the time. Um, it works. Like, find something, like, get you in that state. Like, actually, you can feel it, experience Like, feel that emotion. Um, and then, of course, stretching. This is a great technique um, to use even if you're working. Like, and I'm not talking here about a 20-minute routine. Although, I do advocate, like, I do yoga every night. Um, I'm live on YouTube on that, so... Go Gen 180 on YouTube. Join me for my evening yoga because I believe that you need to stretch out your body. But anytime you feel a temptation, fight it by a few seconds by stretching. You know, if you have just one minute, I, that will defeat temptation because we can't go, like I said, exercise all the time, but we can stretch, right? So um, deep breathing is the next one. This is done just like um, I would do in, a, in my like yoga class, right? So Deep breathing, so we breathe in, right? I tell us to breathe in, you breathe in for eight counts. Hold it for four to eight, depending on how much you can hold it. And then you breathe out, you like you're breathing, and like you're blowing, or you're fogging up a window, like, right? So hold, then breathe out. Okay, when you combine those three countering techniques, it reminds you that you really don't want the chocolate after all. You're rewarding yourself with something important in the stage. Never ever, fruit should not be at all rewarded in the stage. You don't want ever food to be a reward or counter like to deal with your emotions, okay? So don't ever put food in there. Follow that. Um, you know, make contracts that you re- you know reward you for f- fulfilling the agreement. Write down the terms. As everyone, you know, every lawyer knows, a contract is more binding when it's on paper. So stop, make a contract. Do something like, for every pound I lose, I will put blank, you choose a dollar amount, into savings account. You know, shopping account for the weekend getaway. 
I will deposit blank into my shopping account for every 30 minutes I exercise. Um, I will make this. This is one I do because I'm really I love donating. I love giving away, helping things out. But I can do it too much, so this is like my little thing. I will make a donation to charity and the amount of blank dollars for every pound I lose. You know, or for every every hour I don't smoke or don't use that drug, I'll put a buck in. Okay. Use your imagination. Whatever you're trying to free yourself from, rewarding yourself is honestly the most powerful motivator. Um, so if you m decide to make a donation charity, you know, your reward will be immense. Let me tell you, there's nothing grander than, um, you know, there's nothing grander than help making someone else smile, making someone else's day. Losing unwanted weight as you donate money to charity that feeds the hungry children. Think about it. We'll keep you all the more motivated to actually reach your goal. Um, Ron Artest is one of the most um, gifted um, he's known as one of the most gifted players in professional um, basketball. So our test is also one of NBA's bad boys. He has a violence of he has history of violence both on the basketball court and off. He has been fined by the NBA and suspended from play for fighting with opponents on the court on occasion with the fans in the seats. And Ron's bad habits of temper has been his worst enemy throughout his NBA career. Um, his first team, the Indiana Pacers, um, has given up on him. And then he went to Sacramento Kings in 2007-2008. Um, in May 2007, um, Artes was sent sentenced to 20 days in jail, 100 hours of community service. Parenting and anger management classes. Okay? And three years of probation. His crime? Domestic violence and wife abuse. I've been, I've been on the other side of that, you guys. Two very bad habits. In July of 2000, Ron participated in, in the Feed the Children mission that delivered grain to famine stricken regions in Africa. He said that the mission trip gave him a whole new perspective on life. He called it a life changing experience. He plans to return to Kenya often, um, you know, and so, you know, I'm eager to see, like, how long it lasts for him. I need to go back and do, like, follow-up research on him and see how much he lasted, like, after that and stuff. But, you know, just that one little thing can have the power to change somebody. And so you think about that. When we... You know, so much of our addictions and so much of our, our habits and our behaviors are so self-centered, right? It's focused on me. It's focused on, um, it's focused on me being fulfilled. It's focused on calling my anxiety. It's focused on my life not being what I want. It's focused on why did things work out this way for me? Me, 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 me. What's the best way out of me is someone else. Um... You know, when I'm, uh, since I live alone, since I'm single, like, yeah, you know, holidays can be really, really lonely for me at times, or like Mother's Day, like those kind of things. Um, and so what happens is when I'm, when I know I'm going to be alone and lonely, like when I have those days of like everyone else is with their family and I'm not, what was me, right? Blah, 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 poor, woo, poor Jen. Um, that what I do is I go serve. Like I go, I go volunteer somewhere like at the children's hospital. Like I make a point to go volunteer because I know that that day will if I when it's when it's on me I, I'm in a I'm in a selfish funk but when I'm on everybody else man you know what I don't even think about myself and I have the best days ever um you know I just learned as a young child by being to see the the joy and and giving and helping through my you know when I didn't have stuff and um being to give something that I had to work so hard for to somebody else and Seeing them light up, and um, you know, as you're in charge of seeing the fact that I could cause someone to smile. You know, I made my mission from a young child. Like every day, I had to make people smile. Like I just want to make people smile and know they're taken care of. Um, and the moment I stop doing that is the moment that I get back into like addictive behaviors. The point that I get back into my old, you know, just toxic ways. Um, 
Because I have my own coping things that I don't want to go back to. And I know if I don't look beyond myself, you know. So one of those things that you can replace, you know, replace. If you want to replace a bad habit with something, make it so you're doing something for somebody else. Maybe every time that you want to, like, you know, do your bad habit, get on the phone and call somebody that you haven't talked to in a long time. Repair those you know, mend those friendships and stuff. Um, write a letter to someone. How many, how many, we never got a hammer and letter, right? Um, write some encouragement, offer some encouragement, maybe jump on even on social media and like, hey, you're going to be on here and like encourage. You know, I want to, I want to do this, but instead I'm going to encourage somebody. I guarantee you by the time you're done doing that, even if you don't see the effect of it, you feel it. It's only, you know, I don't, it's, I, it's like working out. It gives you those like endorphins of just, um, now you do something bigger than yourself. And so my encouragement to you today on this part four is, um, you know, if you're struggling with trying to change a habit, a really toxic one, or even just a small one, um, remember, think of, think through those things, you know, think through how, how you can relax, think through, make sure you're getting exercise in, and then how can you give? So, you know, how can you, you know, cause yourself like, you know, the, that deep breathing and that stretching and stuff and then that you know and then of course you know you're exercising but I really want to I really want to emphasize here the importance of that giving part of something bigger than yourself or maybe you do like reward your, your reward is that you know dollar goes to this ministry or this 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 thing and let me tell you when you're doing something for somebody else it's going to be a long it's going to be so much more fulfilling to you than ever getting a new outfit a new pair of shoes or something like that I mean, how many do we have I'm on a mission right now to get rid of half of my stuff and I donated here at the end of COVID to people who, like, you know, lost jobs and stuff. Um, and that's making my time here alone. Like, when I feel really lonely, I start, like, going through my stuff and thinking about, like, ooh, you know, because I wear, wear kids' clothes. Um, and so I start thinking of, ooh, what, you know, what, what girl would like this or this would be so good on this person. You know, I can see, see some girl who maybe doesn't have any nice clothes or... Um, my family might need some of these pots and pans that I don't use, or, um, man, I don't really need this, or, um, even just, even, you know, like a little bit side money, like I'm selling things on eBay that I don't need, um, you know, if I have some things just to make some side cash during this time, so, um, you know, those kind of things have saved me and helped me from backsliding, of course, I exercise every day, join my YouTube channel, I have, I have a new app coming out, um, I'll be announcing it, um, later today or tomorrow, where you better go see everything, Everything go Jen. You can go there and like sign for any classes I do, any training. You can see all my master classes. So I'm super stoked about that. That'll be your one stop shop from now on. Um, because I just felt like everything's too scary. You can't find me. I'm on up. And then, of course, I'll be on my social media. But anyway, if you don't know me, um, my name's Jen Plagan. In case I didn't yeah, mention that in the beginning. So sorry. Um, you're a um, holistic empowerment coach, personal training nutritionist, um, of course, transformational coach, moving from a place of stuck. To authentic living, whether you're um, struggling with a food addiction, um, perhaps you, you know, we know that right now in this time that the two populations that are at the most risk are those who are 65 and those who are obese. And so if you are someone who struggles with that, you know, there's no shame, but um, now's the time to step up and do something about it. And I'm here. I specialize in working with people who are, who struggle with like food related um, issues as I have had my own history of it. And I've been able to get to the other side. And so I'm here to take you to the other side and know that you don't want to be where I was sitting across from a doctor telling you that um, you weren't, weren't going to be here much longer if you didn't change some things. And so I want that for you. I don't want to get you to get sick. Do you have too much value and importance in your life? Know that. Like you are worth it. Um, make make the choice now. Um, visit my page, Tribe. Um, dot com, and if you do that, then you'll be able to see that I have up right there for you, um, fifty percent off my twelve weeks. Um, and so, oh, sorry, Go Gen Fit Tribe. Oh my gosh, I knew I was forgetting a word in there. It's posted on my actual page, but hey, <clears throat> sorry, let me get that right. Don't you know? Go Gen Fit Tribe dot com. And there we get the right landing page. Anyway, 12-week program, I'm um, 50% off. I even have it when you, I break it up into numerous payments for you. So you there's doable parts for anyone have a few more slots open. <clears throat> don't don't wait any longer. Like, this is your time. So go for it. Like, choose you. Because you're worth it. 
and don't get it to the point where you are in the hospital with COVID on ventilators going, I should have done something. Because when, when you're obese, all those conditions, a lot of them we can reverse. And I can help you. I've helped others. I just helped a guy, like, totally change his own, all his blood numbers and everything but by him just eating a third less and a couple of days of walking. Like, seriously, let me help you. I'm here for you. I believe in you. Be brave. Be kind. Live authentically. And always try to remember you're just one habit away. Choose all in our habits. All right. I'm your friend and your coach, Jen. Until next time, y'all.